ESPN Classic takes us to the Big House, where number 15 Iowa looks to give number 5 Michigan a run for their money right here on Drive Through. Welcome to Michigan Stadium in Ann Arbor for the 1997 matchup between the Iowa Hawkeyes and the Michigan Wolverines. With both teams scoreless in the first quarter, we jump ahead to the start of the second, where Michigan has the ball on the Iowa 26. Second quarter from the big house, Dave Barnett, Bill Curry, Dave Ryan, nothing, nothing, but Michigan has it on the 26 of Iowa. And Jared DeVries has returned, although he tried to return earlier and they wouldn't let him. Yeah, if I were Jared's coach, I'd be saying, don't limp. You don't want everybody in America to know you're hurt. Go out there and get ready to play, and Jared looks like he's ready. I was running the 10 plays all game. The 11th play of this drive is picked off. At the five yard line by Plez Atkins. The 11th of his career. You gotta wake up, Tony. Sixth all time for the Hawkeyes in picks. Brings it back 14. And Brian Greasy, who had one interception all season coming into this one, has two in this first half. There is a marker down. And they're discussing the flag thrown at the 28 right at about the line of scrimmage. Steve Newman will tell us about it. Disregard the flag. The ineligible is not down here. Not what Lloyd Carr was hoping to hear. Yeah, the head coach in a situation like this, Brian Greasy has played so well and has received so much attention that the one thing that you do not expect is to have him throw into coverage. And this is simply a throw into coverage inviting the result that you see. So the Hawkeyes, like Michigan, have given it up twice today. Go outside Damon Gibson, the senior out of Houston, has the catch in front of the coverage by James Whitley. Dave, I think it's important to explain to the folks that exactly what I mean by throwing into coverage. That means there are too many people with white shirts in the area. If it's man coverage, one-on-one, -on -one, and, and you've got your receiver with a chance to beat the defender, then you throw it. But when there's more than one, and there were three in that case, you pull it down and run and do the best you can. With hitter with a fullback, Berger broke one tackle, but not the second one. He does have the Iowa first. At the 33, where DeHaney Jones had him around the ankles and would let go. Not many opportunities for Michael Berger to carry it just the 14th time this year for the junior former tight end as his number would suggest out of Harlan Iowa. I would suggest that he get the ball a lot today because the Michigan defense sideline to sideline is too fast and right at him is a good way to go. Short drop and juggle with two markers down Gibson at the 47 yard line of Michigan. And somebody will get flagged for a push off. 18 yards on the completion. Tommy Hendricks and Whitley have the coverage, and it is defensive pass on the field. Damon Gibson is a receiver that Iowa had feared. He has tremendous speed, so as he makes his break in this direction, 
Whitley just gets a piece of his jersey and pushes him when the ball is in the air. The college rule is such that once that ball is thrown, you are not allowed to get that last push. So the 15 yards, set so of Iowa at their 47. First time that Sherman has hooked up with a wideout today. The vast majority of his completions, unlike a lot of teams, unlike Michigan, going this year to his wide receivers. Rob Tyne in at fullback. As Banks noted for his cutbacks, had to cut back the instant he got that pitch. And all he manages is the line of scrimmage where Josh Williams had it. Tavian Banks, who shows very little emotion, knows that on that play, he was one inch from popping one of his patented long runs. The Hawkeye offense has averaged less than two minutes this year per scoring drive. And look how many they popped at 58 or better. Banks in 82, Banks 76, Banks 71, 63, and twice Gibson involved a 58 and a 65 yarder. 39. Big plays already for this Iowa attack. Weaving his way all the way. Tavian Banks gone. Touchdown. Banks for Iowa. 53 yards. Those are the lasers that we talked about in the open. Banks was upset with himself on the previous play because he did not break it. This time he finished the job with superb help by Mike Goff, his right guard, who's considered to be a big league prospect himself. This is 4.2340 speed, as fast as any back in America. So a stunned silence in Michigan Stadium as Iowa, as they have to everybody except Ohio State this year, Gets the big play, offense cranked up. The extra point by Zach Bromert. And Tavian Banks has struck for the Hawkeyes. 13-29 in the first half, 7 to nothing, Iowa. So Michigan, not a halftime lead, forget it. Interception. With just under five minutes remaining in the second quarter, Michigan tied the game when Brian Greasy connected with Ty Streets for Michigan's first touchdown of the day. With the score now tied at seven, we move ahead with four minutes, 53 seconds left in the second quarter, and Iowa is set to receive. At seven to seven, just under five minutes to go in the half. Great Peters kick is returned by Richard Carter. Couple of emotional swings, momentum swings in this first half. Good. Very important for Iowa to get a big play early, and they did. Very important for Michigan to answer, and they did. Now Sherman being chased by Jones. And Gahanny Jones can run a little bit. I was just about to say that Sherman had surprised me with his speed until I saw him try to outrun to Hanny Jones. But Jones looks to me to be a 4-5 type guy. He's an outstanding student. And it's nice when you're bright and you can fly. He replaces the injured Eric Mays, the former walk-on who had been elected captain out for the year. After knee surgery, Jones, though, stepping right in, has led Michigan and tackles each of the last two weeks in the absence of men. Gave it to Banks out of one tackle, number 33. Sam Sword finally there to grab Tavian Banks. So we see the offensive thinking of Iowa progressing here. It's very clear that they agree that the right way to attack Michigan is straight up. Get after them because when you try to go side to side, they track you down like heat seeking missiles. Fabian Banks, by the way, 76 yards. He came in needing 81 to go to 1,000. His 53 yarder for the only Iowa score so far. Michigan a little bit too anxious this time on the blitz with Sword and Jones 
ready to storm the gates before the snap. Sam Sword felt like he had the snap count calculated. We'll see if he was correct. Well, he's applauding, and I was moving back. He was correct. Prior to the snap, false start on the offense. Five yard penalty remains third down. It is so important as a poised offensive lineman. Look right in this region. You'll see people, Mike Goff moving early. When Mike moves, then his right tackle, McKinney moves. You must sit in there. That's the discipline of the O-lineman. That's football. Doesn't matter who's running at you. Sherman now having to bark it out over the crowd on third and 11. Off the play fake. Intercepted at the 45, the second in this first half for Marcus Ray. Marcus Ray showed his experience. He baited Sherman into this throw. He hung and hung. He didn't let Sherman see that he had good coverage. He sat in the middle. He's right over here, just out of the picture until the ball is thrown and then he makes this break. That's his second interception of the day. And he is demonstrating senior leadership for this great defense. Sherman, as you said, not aware of where Ray was until, unfortunately for him, it was too late. Canipper had a step on sword, didn't see Marcus. So Michigan, now thinking about a halftime lead, forget it. Interception. Ed Gibson with a big return. Inside the five, stretches toward the goal line and almost made it at the one. Iowa, after a 63-yard return by Ed Gibson, will have it first and goal. Two consecutive ill-advised throws by two veteran quarterbacks who should know better. What's happened is these two quarterbacks have obviously made a decision that they're going to have to force things and make big plays today, and they have both cost their teams. This is what you call good field position. Well, a couple of teams that have not been plagued by turnovers, certainly to this degree, and that is the story, beginning and ending of the story for this first half. Ed Gibson with his first pick of the year to set up the Iowa touchdown. As the fullback, Berger, just plowed over left tackle to give the Hawkeyes the lead back. That was an old-fashioned power eye with those linemen down in four-point stances, their elbows bent, their knees bent, nose to the ground, and root hogging off the football to move the line of scrimmage backward. You'll see the, the line of scrimmage actually move into the end zone, which allows the fullback, Berger, number 85, to knock it in for the touchdown. Which he enjoyed. Thanks. Gets most of the scoring opportunities. And that's the first this year for Berger. The extra point is blocked. So keep it at 13 7 Iowa. Careless protection up front causes those kinds of blocks. The 63 yard return by Gibson, though, made the Berger touchdown possible, and it's 13 7 Hawkeye. Up next, the Hawkeyes continue to shock Michigan Stadium as they keep pouring on the points. So third and 15. Michigan offense has given it up four times on giveaways. The defense, though, trying to get it back for them once more. And this one is batted around. And with three blue jerseys converging on it, none of them can come up with it. And Clint Copenhaver can't believe that result. Well, Michigan has come back with Jim Herman's favorite kind of defense, which is to get after him with the blitz. So you've got man coverage here. And a break on the ball by the rookie Peterson is all it takes to break up the play. Copenhaver would have had it, and so would Sword, but they outfought each other for it. 
Six true freshmen have played for the Wolverines, and Peterson's been one of the real pleasant surprises. Baker's had a big first half. And is this one away from Woodson? It gets the roll. Inside the four. Jason Baker is one of the most impressive true freshmen I've seen in a long, long time. I liked his leg action, even though his results weren't great two weeks ago. His results today have been superb. Down to Dave Ryan. Well, guys, Michigan offensive coordinator Mike DeBoer says he gave his team two quizzes during the week during contact drills. He wanted to make sure they got through every single exercise, every drill, without a fumble. They did that. And he was pleased they passed the two quizzes. Now he wanted to make sure they passed the test in this game. That was not fumbling against the Hawkeyes, but it's happened today in addition to live interceptions. Yeah, the worst uh, fears playing out. But I tell you what, uh, with four giveaways to the Iowa offense, as high powered as they are, to only have surrendered 13 points, not many, if any, other defenses. Could, uh, could have uh, salvaged as close a first half as they have. Williams to the nine under a minute. But there's a reason that they're the number one ranked defense in America. They've already given up almost three times more than their average per game, and we haven't gotten to the half. I think you're right, Dave, but I think they've got their hands full today with the Hawkeyes. Well, they knew that coming in. They knew they couldn't afford this many giveaways. Uncharacteristic, especially by Greasy. Pull down from behind by DeVries. They said yesterday when they run away from him, he's such a great finesse player. That's where he shows his true ability when they run right at him and attack him head on. He struggles. Well, it reminds one of playing against the old. Deacon Jones type player who was just awesome coming from the backside. Jared DeVries is similar in that he takes severe slants and moves so quickly and so well for a big guy that it gets in your backfield. He is still limping. Well, Jared and I will have to have a meeting at the half. You can't let people know that you hurt. They'll figure out which leg it is for the second half. They hadn't blocked him yet, though, so uh, maybe he ought to hurt the other leg. Coming up, the National Car Rental Halftime Report. So far, unofficially, he's caused a fumble, knocked a pass down, a tackle for a loss, and got five tackles total. Mike Tarico in the studio. We'll hear again from Chris Fowler, Lee Corso, and Kirk Herb Street, all down in Auburn. We're there preparing, along with uh, several thousand fans, ringing their Outdoor studio for Auburn, Florida later. 23 seconds to go in this first half. Yeah, I promise you it's more than several fouls. Well, that's just outside the city. In a minute. First timeout just called by Iowa. They each have two. Williams. Nothing. No gain. And another quick Hawkeye turnover. Or their timeout call with uh, just five seconds elapsed in 18 seconds. That's good football. Taking those two timeouts forces the Wolverines to punt the ball here, and that has become a little more of an adventure than Lloyd Carr would like. They've had problems with the long snap. Now they've had problems with protection in this game, and, and more pointedly, they've had problems getting the ball off quickly by their punters. What Carr's got to worry about is both Dwight and Collins are back. First time they punted it, they dropped right back in single safety, and uh, he seemed to lose it in the sun and let it uh, bounce. He did. He lost it in the sun. So at this point, they've dropped them both back as Jason Vinson is eight yards deep in his end end zone. They line up right in front of one another and hope that, uh, that White is able to guess right. And in this case, he is driven back inside his 40 on a big punt by Vinson. Reverses field. Gets a block. Weaves the other way, and he's going to go. Tim Dwight brings this one back as time elapses in the first half. Mercy, 61-yard return by Dwight. The Iowa team is electrified by their most electrifying player. 
Tim Dwight has turned over the Heisman run to Tavian Banks, but he might have just vaulted right back into the picture. And a great open field block by Rob Tyne, number 31. Only the sixth time this year a team has allowed Tim Dwight to make a return. And David, there is no time on the clock. He got to about midfield and he started to think, well, should he just go down and give that offense one more shot? Never entered his mind, quite yeah, obviously. Tim doesn't think quite that way. Going for two. This uh, made necessary by the block extra point on the roll. Wide open is Knipper. And so the first half expires with a 61-yard punt return by Tim Dwight. A fired up Hayden Prime. And over 100,000 very unhappy Wolverine fans in the big house. This goes straight on to the Tim Dwight highlight reel. One of his best. And it makes for a 21-7 Iowa halftime lead. One advantage is total yards gets even bigger. Here's a cut back by Thomas, and Anthony Thomas has one man to beat. Michigan came out of the locker room firing on all cylinders as they capped off a 67-yard opening drive with Greasy's second touchdown pass of the day. So with the score now, Iowa 21, Michigan 14, we pick up the action with 6.01 remaining in the third right here on ESPN Classic Drive. On that last series, uh, Iowa trying to get Tim Dwight the ball on the reverse. It was strung out successfully, and we didn't see him after this big hit by Peterson. That's right. This is an extremely physical game you'll see Peterson come from the deep secondary full speed he never let up he really level Lawrence Williams coming through called on early and often in this third quarter with some of his best ball of the season let's look at it again the white reverse I think this is symbolic of the kind of the kind of game we see here where people are playing full bore. This is a big hit by a true freshman on a great senior player, and everybody on the field is laying it on the line, and that's why you love Big Ten football. Williams good for eight. And a better than two to one advantage in total yards gets even bigger. Here's a cut back by Thomas, and Anthony Thomas has one man to beat. With an angle, Eric Thigpen shoves him out inside the five. And another big block by 76, Steve Hutchinson, the red shirt freshman from Coral Park, Florida. All day long, I've said that Thomas really wasn't seeing the cutback. In this case, he sees it, and when the big guy sees it, he's off to the races. 58 yards, last gasp right there. Thick pin got him at the four. Michigan almost perfect scoring inside the 20 this year. Williams with a lean right at the goal line, and they didn't quite get him in. He is a couple of feet out. They've been down there 24 times. They've had 16 touchdowns and seven field goals prior to this game. Coach Carr's got to be very pleased with the attitude of his squad coming out here 14 points down and now just about into the end zone to give themselves a chance to tie. Yeah, if they do, it couldn't hope for a much quicker comeback from 14 down, which they were at the half. Thomas kept his legs driving, but still no signal. And it will be third down. Crowds get very upset with officials' decisions, but those officials are standing right on this goal line. There's an official standing right there, and he knows whether that ball crossed the plane. And that's what the rule says. The ball must cross the imaginary plane of the end zone. So they did a good job on that call. 
looked like Iowa may have knocked the ball loose but it already called his forward progress. That far away. Thomas again. And again no signal. Waiting to see where they unpile Anthony Thomas. They haven't said touchdown. They haven't said fourth down. But whatever they say, the Michigan offensive line is getting manhandled. That offensive line's job, as we indicated earlier, is to get their pads down and move the line of scrimmage back into the end zone so that the back has a place to run. Well, you can't be any closer to the goal line without actually being in. This is football. Pads down. Everybody fighting. Greasy on the sneak, and that time it works. Yeah, and that time the big guys up front did something with their feet. That's the first time that the O-line came off like they should, and Coach DeBoer will have them on the boards, literally, on the practice field next week. They, the Michigan staff will not be excited about that drive from the two-yard line. As it been Brian Greasy's day, he has thrown three interceptions. But he has them in position for Craig Baker to tie it with the extra point. Which he does and with 3-11 to go in the third. Iowa, which led 21-7 at the half, has been caught. Tim Dwight who got shaken up apparently on the hit by Peterson back in the middle of the uh, receiving formation for the Hawkeye. Jay Feely often doesn't get you one to return but White brings this one from the three and he again finds some open room. Tim Dwight in a foot race and knocked out. They will mark him at the 27 yard line but he's done it again to Michigan. And if not for the close by Dwayne Patman, this one might have gone 97 as it is at 72. Look at the explosiveness of Tim Dwight. This is a man who won 15 titles in track in his high school career in Iowa City. And once he gets an opening, the blocking is superb by everybody up front. You can't single out a particular blocker. That kickoff return team will get enormous credit if this results in points. Michigan goes 71 yards in six plays, and Tim Dwight brings it back 72, and it's Iowa first and 10 from the 26 of the Wolverine. Davian Banks, where he saw room to the left, didn't last long. Clint Copenhaver wrapped him up at the 32. So often when he's gotten the ball, either on a pitch or a handoff, he's had to immediately change direction from the way the play was designed. Yeah. Michigan defense is set up to create situations so the backs are forced to try to bounce, and then they use their great speed to track you down. He had gone to 100 for the day. That drops him back to 94. On his 15 carries. Sherman, well protected, steps up, and the completion at the 26 yard line for the fullback, Michael Berger. Third catch this year for the former tight end. For whatever reason, Tim Sherman is shaking. He had plenty of time in the pocket there, and he got what we call nervous feet. He started running and moving and jerking when he didn't need to. He's not the poised quarterback that I've seen him be in the past. And his numbers reflect that. Three for 13 for 12 yards. Two interceptions. Protection good again. But Woodson closed on what he thought was the angle at the 21 yard line. Michigan apparently forcing 
I want to settle for three or the attempted three. Because it would break the tie, but after the momentum provided by that return by Dwight, they'll be a little disappointed. I'll tell you, uh, Hayden Fry is well known for his little bag of tricks and what he calls exotics. The way this game is going, I wouldn't be surprised to see a fake here if they've got something they think will work. Well, if they kick it, it's just 38 yards for Zach Bromberg. Because they scored mostly touchdowns, he hasn't tried that many this year. This one is on the mark, and it does break the time. This may be the day that Thomas could no longer be seen as a threat. Same thing, and he's to the 15, another Michigan first down. She plays his uh, ticket as soon as he heads over that bench. Michigan Drive still alive. Anthony Thomas may squeeze out the Starting to sound like a broken record. Jared DeVries was in the backfield. He tripped him up. He has been dominant today. When you study a football team and they have a dominating defensive lineman, you have to rescheme virtually everything. I don't think Michigan expected this from Jared DeVries. He has taken this game over. The bigger the game, the more he likes it. He has been the defensive MVP of last year's Alamo Bowl and the most valuable lineman of the Sun Bowl from two years ago. Thomas wrapped up by Steve English, the backup nose guard. And Michigan faced with another third down. They'll need five here as we near the five minute mark. They can't figure on getting too many more offensive opportunities. This is probably the biggest play of the game thus far. Michigan almost certainly must keep this drive alive to keep their hopes alive. Iowa ready to come with the blitz. Might have uh, gotten off too quickly. Tim admits the catch. At the 45, good for 20 yards as we wait for the flag. But this is a very big call by the officials. So much of it depends on who moves and when. Defense offsides in the call. It's very important for the defense to show poise, not be distracted by the snap count. Breezy does a good job here, and then a great throw and catch. You see the mismatch once again. Tuman on Raj Clark. It's tough to ask a linebacker that weighs 245 pounds to run with a tight end that moves like Jeremy Tuman. Big play. John LaFleur, the man that moved for Iowa. Breezy finally with some time on another catch by Jeremy Tuman. 20 more, 15 more yards out at the 30. Exactly the same play. Sometimes offensive coordinators are criticized for repeating plays. More often they should be criticized if they don't repeat good plays. In this case, Mike DeBoard comes up with a nice call going back to the, to the well for the second time and another good throwing kick. A Michigan drive, which is still alive because of a pass interference on a third down against Plez Atkins. There's DeBoard. To pull out every stop. With only five minutes left, it's still down. Thomas breaking through the middle for eight or nine. One back in the backfield. Backs, receivers, tight ends spread all over the field. The natural anticipation of the defense would be to expect a throw, and in case, instead they hand it off to Thomas, who follows the excellent blocking up front by his center, Zach Adamy. Boom! Good movement. Good movement on Klein, and the big guy's loose. Even though Klein spins off, he rips through the tackle. This may be the day that Thomas can no longer be seen as a freshman. Same thing, and he's to the 15, another Michigan first down. A little fisticuffs occurring after the play. Flags all over the field, and again, depends on who hit first and who hit last. Normally, the player who hit last is the one that's called. Zach Adamy, the center's involved. Third 
penalty on this Michigan drive against Iowa. One of the critical aspects of winning well, the football game. Personal foul. Is dead ball, personal foul on the defense. Half the distance to the goal, first down. You simply must keep your poise. Rod Clark is the man who commits the penalty, and it's a big one against his team. He's pulled from the game as a result. Anthony Thomas, left tackle, tried to cut it back at the five-yard line. Meanwhile, second and goal for the Wolverines from the Iowa Five under three and a half minutes. Anthony Thomas to the two, where it's third and goal. Dave Barnett, Bill Curry, and Dave Ryan, 3-10 to go in Michigan Stadium. Iowa up 21-7 at the half. Up 24-21 at the moment as Michigan looks at third and goal from the two. Play fake, Greasy on the roll, pulls up, there's Jeremy Tillman, and Michigan leads. extra point try for Craig Baker to force Iowa to think touchdown only and he's got it and it's 28 24 to 55 remaining for a possible Iowa comeback German from the 26 pressure for Steele steps up and it's intercepted by Sam Sword and he will keep it away from Mr. Dwight. Damon Gibson. Damon Gibson had his knee touch turf at the 27. And this playing surface has been a major factor in this football game with some critical slips by both teams. Physical slips, that is. This crowd was two things at the half, silent and sullen, <laughs> and they've gotten over it. And when Michigan came out to start the second half, they gave them maybe the loudest ovation of the year, and the, the, the players have responded with a 21-3 second half so far. Eric Rose never snapped it. Everybody else was ready. In the first half, he snapped it when no one was ready, and that caused an Iowa turnover. The quarterback forgot the snap count there. And this is what happens. Even with a veteran quarterback, he has so Prior much to, the to snap. think about. False start on the offense. Five-yard penalty, still first down. He has so much to think about, he calls the correct audible and then forgets the snap count and pulls out, causing the penalty. Not a good way to start the drive. Went motion out of the backfield. Now comes back and incomplete. They tried to get him over the middle for the little screen. And he couldn't hang on. Second and 15. Both teams with all the timeouts. Football today is so driven by the performance of the quarterback because of the load that's on him, the cerebral and the physical and the tactical load the quarterbacks have to bear. Sometimes some of the little things slip away at the toughest times. It happens to everybody. Marcus Ray creeping up. Here he comes. Safety blitz picked up by Banks. Wide open. Chris Knipper. And the tight end is up to the 31 to make it for Iowa third and about six. And Matt Sherman showing his maturity here. Number 12 by calmly standing in the pocket after all that's happened. 
hitting the big tight end, giving them a chance to get this first down. Now at third and five rather than third and 15. Only the fifth completion of the day for Matt Sherman. One of 11 on third downs for Iowa. Remember, we're talking about the number two total offense in the country. German Chase and dropped at the 28 by Rod Renis. Glenn Steele is down, but he's the guy that broke the pocket. He beat Chad Deal to the inside, forced Sherman out of the pocket, and now he goes down. Impossible to tell from here what the injury might be. Coverage sack here all the way. Sherman looked up, looked left, right, middle, and saw nobody open. <laughs> he also saw Steele bearing down on him immediately. So as they check on Glenn Steele, 141 to go in Ann Arbor. <laughs> Iowa's used its first time out as they discuss a fourth down and nine. 141 to go. And if you're ever going to say your prayers, now is the time if you're a Hawkeye. Well, there's a great story about saying prayers in athletic competition. The fellow goes with his priest to watch a boxing match. One of the guys crosses himself, says a prayer. The parishioner says, Father, will that help him? He said, yeah, if he's a good boxer. <laughs> so prayers might help if you're a real good football team on fourth and nine. Won't hurt. White comes left, Gibson right. Ian Gold through the middle. They pick him up on his blitz. Sherman finds Gibson. And Gibson in the open field dragged down at midfield by Charles Woodson. But Iowa is still alive on a 22-yard Sherman to Gibson connection. That is a phenomenal play by Matt Sherman, who's had a rough day. Now twice he's kept his team alive with superb poise and accuracy. What a great play by the quarterback. Just across midfield. Banks goes in motion. Sherman keeps his balance somehow. And out of bounds at the 48, a pickup of two. Woodson left his feet as if he expected a Sherman pass. If that's what had happened, it would have been an illegal pass beyond the line of scrimmage. And that took Woodson out of any chance uh, to bring Sherman down himself. But it stops the clock. It serves another purpose. Saves him a timeout with 106. 106,000 plus for Michigan, the 140th straight crowd of at least 100,000 in the big house. Jim Herman's defense under fire all day. This is what you pay to see. Coming again with a blitz, and they got him. Clint Copenhaver. Sherman called timeout here. He had enough presence of mind to do that. He just got blindsided by Copenhaver on a four-man blitz that he should have seen coming. For Iowa, third and 17. They have missed on their last six third down tries. On this one, they need to get just across the Michigan 40-yard line. They're down to their last time out. They have 58 seconds remaining. And they cannot think field goal. Sherman steps up again. There's an open man up the right side for another big chunk goes Banks, who has done most of his damage on the ground today. This time, he bites off 29 yards worth. And another mismatch. Remember, coaches work to develop these. A mismatch of Tavian Banks on Ian Gold, a linebacker. Gold is fast. Banks is faster. Clock rolling. Don't forget, as soon as we're complete here, the Nike Tour Championship from Alabama.
Sherman from the 26. Pressure from Steele. Steps up. And it's intercepted by Sam Sword. interception of the year right here. Sam has taken over the leadership in the absence of Eric Mays and Matt Sherman did one of those inexplicable things. He'll not be able to explain this to himself or to anybody else. He threw it right to the wrong color shirt. Michigan down 21 to 7 at the half. They come back and it is sealed by Sam Swords interception. The junior from Saginaw, Michigan will uh, make it 6 and 0 for Michigan. For people who've never been in a game like this, the guy that summed it up best was Vince Lombardi. He used to tell us regularly. When you win one like this, all the joy, all the happiness, all the laughter goes to the victor and to the loser. All he gets is the determination to come back again. And that's how it feels. There's nothing quite like it in the world. Look at these youngsters that have worked so hard to get to this place. And Iowa will come back and have their day. So the Wolverines have done their part to set up the unbeaten showdown next week in East Lansing with Michigan State, which has Northwestern this afternoon. Michigan wins it. Storm.